Today we will be talking about antibodies, immunoglobulins. Right, the concepts about immunoglobulins are very important. These are one of the most important molecules in our body. We cannot survive without them in such a hostile world where there are so many microbes and so many path pathogens which are trying to invade our body and destroy, destroy our tissue. Now, exactly what are antibodies? Antibodies. They are also called immuno, yes please, immunoglobulins. Now, what are exactly antibodies? From where they come in our body and exactly where they are present, right? Major portion of the antibodies circulating in the blood, right? Antibodies are special protein molecules. Antibodies are very special type of protein molecules which are secreted by plasma cells. Antibodies are special type of protein molecules which are secreted by the plasma cells. Now, what, what is a plasma cell? Actually, whenever a B lymphocyte, whenever a B lymphocyte becomes fully differentiated and becomes fully functional, right, it starts producing antibodies. It starts secreting Y-shaped molecules or antibodies. So, antibodies are the products of proteinaceous product of well differentiated B cells or protein products of plasma cells. Is that right? Now, exactly in the blood, in which component of the blood antibodies are present? Yes, please. Question goes to very impressive doctor, Dr. Safa. In which component of the blood antibodies are present? Let's come with very simple thing. Everyone knows that blood has two components, cell then, yes please, plasma and plasma has many components, is that right? One of the component is plasma proteins. Actually, antibodies are the part of the plasma proteins. That's a very basic concept that where antibodies are. Antibodies are present, yes, present in your blood as the proteinaceous component of the plasma. Now, plasma has many type of proteins. Now, we have to see that within the plasma and within the plasma protein where antibodies are exactly present. So, Dr. Israel may answer us that your plasma has proteins and one component of the plasma proteins are basically antibodies. Now, uh, which component of the plasma protein is having antibodies. I'm about to be impressed by him. I think he's very serious right now. He doesn't want to answer. So I will do it myself. Look, uh, one of the way, let's suppose that on this filter paper, we put a drop of plasma, right? We put all the plasma proteins here. We put all the plasma proteins here, you know plasma protein the positively charged or negatively charged? Like to keep secrets, you don't tell me. Plasma proteins are negatively charged. Is that right? At body pH, which is 7.4 by the way, at the body pH, plasma proteins are yeah. negatively charged. Now, because most of the plasma proteins are negatively charged, if you put a drop of plasma on this filter paper, and you run the current across it, for example, you put negative electrode here and positive electrode here, of course, plasma proteins will move from negative electrode towards positive electrode because plasma proteins are themselves negative. So they will be repelled by the negative and of course, they will be attracted to the positive. So plasma protein will start moving. Now, as plasma proteins start moving, this segregate into group because all the plasma proteins don't move right with the same speed on this paper. You can answer this. If plasma protein is very heavy, right, that will move fastly or slowly? slowly? Slowly. Actually, those plasma proteins which are more negative and smaller in molecular weight, they will be more smart and they will rush fastly. So what really happens that some of the plasma proteins will reach here, right? Then there will be some here, 
here and here and here. Now, these are the plasma proteins which are smallest in molecular weight, right? And they are more mobile, right? So they will come over here. This was the movement, right? Heavier plasma proteins will be left behind. Is that right? If you divide the plasma protein or segregate the plasma protein by this way, this is called process of electrophoresis. Have you heard of it? Process of electrophoresis. When you do electrophoresis of the plasma proteins, right, the electrophoresis. Is that right? Now, electrophoresis when you do the plasma proteins, the smallest molecule of weight will be here and as the plasma proteins become more and more heavier, they are segregated in a different band, right? Actually, these plasma proteins as a group are called, yes please, albumins. Because albumins are the smallest molecular weight. And this whole group of plasma proteins, these three, this is called globulins. Globulins. And this is post fibrinogen. Is that right? Another way to show this is that you draw a graph. Graph is that if you put molecular weight here and you are classifying the plasma protein according to the increasing molecular weight on this side and plasma protein concentration on this side, then this is albumin. Hmm? What is this? This is albumin and these are globulins. Am I clear? Now, out of this, this is alpha globulin, these are beta globulins, these are gamma globulins. It means primarily plasma proteins are albumin and globulins and globulins can be separated, globulins are globular protein, can be separated, right, according to their molecular weight into alpha globulins, beta globulins and gamma globulins. Is that right? Am I clear? Albumin's molecular weight is about approximately 70 kilo Dalton, but globulin's molecular weight is from 90 to 120 kilo Dalton. Kilo Dalton, right? Now, within this shade, where exactly antibodies are present? That is the question. Now, I think you should be intelligent enough to guess. In this band, this is albumin, alpha globulin, beta globulin, gamma globulin, and exactly where the plasma proteins are segregated. Israel, Dr. Safa. Of course, they are not alpha and beta, they are in gamma. Actually, if you study, if you study these plasma proteins, these are antibodies. If you study this band, this is antibody. So, where are the plasma protein in your body? Plasma proteins are of course in the plasma, but within the plasma protein, where are the antibodies? Antibodies are part of the gamma globulins. Actually, that is why antibodies are also given another name. What is that name? Gamma globulins. Simple as that. Am I clear? So, there are three names. The antibodies, the immunoglobulins, these are gamma globulins. Now, these are three same name for the same type of molecule. Is that right? That gamma globulins mean those globular proteins which are part of the gamma fragment, right? Or gamma band on electrophoresis of plasma protein. Immunoglobulins mean what? Those globulin proteins which have immune function. They are also antibodies. And what are antibodies? Antibodies are those protein molecules which are secreted by well differentiated B cells called plasma cells and antibodies specifically, this is very important, antibody molecules specifically react with, antibody molecules specifically react with the antigens which stimulated the formation of those antibodies. So what are antibodies? Antibodies are protein molecules secreted by the secreted by the plasma cells which can, which react specifically with those antigens which elicited their or stimulated their formation or stimulated their synthesis am i clear no problem up to this now if i give you a statement i say that antibodies are those globular 
proteins right which are produced by the plasma cells and they react with specifically with the antigens which lead uh, which st stimulated their formation plus i can say antibodies are also called immunoglobulins because why we call the antibodies immunoglobulins because antibody molecules are just proteins which are part of the globular globulin components of the plasma protein and which component of the globulins gamma globulins is that right so next time if i someone asks you that in your blood where the antibodies are present you say remove the cells left is the plasma out of the plasma separate the proteins run the proteins electrophorically and find the gamma band and all your antibodies will be present in gamma band am i clear there is no problem up to this now we come to really basic structure of antibody as i told you these are basically proteins with little carbohydrate component and when proteins have a little carbohydrate component we call them glycoproteins and protein they have a little carbohydrate component what we call them glycoproteins to be more specific antibodies are glycoproteins antibodies are glycoproteins now let's come to the basic structure of a typical antibody yeah antibody is basically a tetrapeptide any antibody is basically a number one condition is it is a tetra peptide when i say that antibody is a tetra peptide it means how many peptide chains it has four it is tetra peptide consisting of two heavy chains and two light chains a typical antibody molecule is a tetra peptide with two heavy chains and two light chains held together by yes held together by disulfide bond disulfide bonds so again what is antibody antibody is a tetra peptide antibody is of course glycoprotein molecule right it is a tetra peptide consisting of two heavy chains and two light peptide chains all of them are held together by disulfide bond am i clear and it is usually a y shaped molecule let me make you a typical antibody molecule antibody molecule should have four peptides okay i will make two heavy peptides here why we call this peptide heavy peptide or heavy chain right this is a heavy chain and there must be another there must be yes please another heavy chain so antibody has two heavy chains with that it has two yes light chains it has two light chains and th there are two heavy chains and there are two light chains and they are held together by yes please disulfide bonds these are the disulfide bonds which are holding them together and of course they should be held together by disulfide bonds now let's go back to the definition antibody is of course an immunoglobulin which is secreted by plasma protein present in the plasma gamma globulin component right antibody the basically tetra peptide the four peptides having two heavy chains and two these are two heavy chains and two light chains held together by disulfide bonds am i clear this is a typical uh, you can say shape of the antibody now antibodies have the specific function of the antibodies they should bind with the antigen in a specific manner right now in which part of the antibody antigen binds yes you will tell me you can just come here and put your finger in which part of the molecule antigen will bind exactly yes just tell it hurry up i don't know top mean how many points are there where antigen can bind you don't know the, just come 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 here you know be brave yes 
which are antigen will bind here. Okay. Like in this area? No, no. I, I give you here. This is antigen, right? Uh -huh. Very sad because it's going to bind with end. You draw it there exactly where it will bind. Okay, so it rides over there. You are near the point, but honestly, it should be laughing here. You know why? why? Because from here it can escape away. Your, no, 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 no. It should be in between them like here, and then it will, you know, both chains will cooperate to catch it. You see? Antigens are not here. They, they will run away. Is that right? Actually, a part of a light chain and part of a heavy chain together grab the antigen. This is very important to know. This is one antibody molecule having two heavy chains, two light chains, right? And one antibody molecule, which I'm showing here, can bind with two antigens or two epitopes of the antigen. Is that right? Now, let me tell you. Actually, the antigens which are direct, sorry, the antibodies yeah, which are directed against different antigens must be different in this area. Let me tell you what I'm telling. For example, here is one antigen like this. Another antigen is like this. Another antigen is Do you think these antigens are the same or different from each other? They are different from each other. And antibodies it will bind with, do you think one antibody can bind with all three of them? No. Antibodies are very specific. The antibody which will bind with this antigen will not bind with the other ones. Is that right? Every antibody is very, very specific for a given antigen or closely structural given antigen. Now, if I say the antibody body which is going to react with this, it cannot react with this. An antibody which reacts with this antigen cannot react with the other two. It means this part of the molecule, you know this part of the antibody molecule should be dif different in different antibodies for different antigens. Are you understanding? For example, let me tell you that I will make a simple diagram that let's suppose this is like now they can catch this antigen. Is that right? In the same way now it will more specifically fit Suppose this is antigen number one, this is antigen number two, this is antigen number three. Is that right? Am I clear? Now, opposite to that, if there is another antibody and which will fit in, which antibody is directed for that, that antibody will have some difference. Now, uh, do you think antigen number one can bind here? No, it is designed for antigen number two. Antigen number two can better fit over here. Is that right? So what we see that this part of the heavy chain and the light chain is vary, varying from antibody to antibody when antibodies are directed against for different antigens. So we say that let's suppose if we have three antibody molecules, one is for this antigen, other antibody molecule is for this antigen, and other antibody molecule is for this antigen, then what will happen? All those antibody molecules which are directed against different antigens should have this area with different configuration. It means this area varies according to the 
specificity for antigen reaction. That is why this part of the light chain, this is the light chain, this part of the light chain is variable light chain. And this part of the heavy chain also vary. So this is variable heavy chain, this component. This part of, of course, this is a peptide chain. So it should have here amino end and here it should have carboxyl end. The same way heavy chain should have one amino end, another JS carboxyl end. You understand this thing? Every peptide chain has on one side amino end and another carboxyl end. So what really ha happens that amino end of the light chain and amino end of the heavy chain, they are having a domain. Domain means an, a region of amino acids sequence within a peptide chain. This domain is variable. So this is variable domain of the light chain. This is variable domain of the heavy chain. Is that right? But this, this component, this component, this will not vary. It is constant. It is constant. We call it constant of the light chain and constant of the, yes please, heavy chain. This is variable of the heavy chain and this is constant of the heavy chain. And if you come to the light chains, this will be what? Variable of the light chain and this will be constant of the light chain. Is that right? No problem up to this? Let me make it more clear. Let's suppose there is star antigen, there is spherical antigen and there is potato antigen. The star antigen, ball, ball antigen, B A W L ball antigen and potato antigen. Now antibodies reacting against them will be same or different? Different antibodies. Let's suppose I show the antibody for this. These are the heavy chains, all of them. I am showing in a very simple way, you can understand. Now these are three antibody molecules, but antibody molecule which will react with the star, let me show star here, which is going to react with the star, this part of the light chain will be variable and this part of the heavy chain will be variable. Of course here if on one side it is binding with the star, on other side it will also bind with the star. So the same variable which is here on the heavy chain, here also same variable will be there and variable will be there on the light chain also. Now, if this molecule is going to be this ball antigen, then what will happen? Now, here is the, let's suppose I put the ball. Do you think the variable regions can be same as star? No, so they will vary from in this area. You understand it? Now we come to this. For that antigen, suppose there is another antibody which specifically react with that. Of course, it will have two heavy chains and just please two light chains, right? Now this antigen is like this. Now you understand it, that basically a particular antibody will react only with the specific antigen. Every antibody does not react with every antigen. And why a specific antibody molecule react only with a specific antigen? Because antigen binding area, antigen binding area of the antibody has variable regions. And these variable regions, right? vary from one group of antibodies to the next group of antibodies to the next group of the antibodies as antibody group change their specificity for the antigens, right? Now come back. So this was variable domain, domain of the light chain and this is the constant domain of the light chain. Then this is a variable domain of the 
heavy chain. This is the constant domain of the heavy chain. Heavy chain has many constant domain. Uh, constant domain number one, constant domain number two, constant domain number three, right? One, constant domain number one, constant domain number of the heavy chain number two or three. And later on we'll find that most of the antibody classes, how many antibody classes are there? There are five basic classes of the antibodies, right? Uh, the five classes of antibodies are called, can you tell me? Immunoglobulin, G, A, immunoglobulin A, A class, immunoglobulin M group class, immunoglobulin E and immunoglobulin D. We call it gamed. All the immunoglobulins can be primarily divided into five classes. I will tell you later how we divide them on what, what base immunoglobulins can be divided into five classes. But antibodies can be divided into five classes. This is immunoglobulin G, immunoglobulin A, immunoglobulin M, we immunoglobulin Ig. Now you understand why we call it immunoglobulin. These are the globular proteins from the globulin component of the plasma proteins having immune function and belonging to the class of G or class of A. <coughs> right or class of M, E or D. Out of this, M, E, me, very important, you know, me has longer heavy chain. What does it mean? That basically, immunoglobulin M and immunoglobulin E has heavy chains with constant number 1, constant number 2, constant number 3, constant number 4, right? So, constant of the heavy chains in immunoglobulin class M and class E is how many? 1, 2, 3 and 4. But immunog uh, immunoglobulin A, G and D, their heavy chains are having only how many constant domain? Constant domain number 1, 2 and 3. But IgM and IgG have how many? One four, uh, one additional that is four. Is that right? Now let's review it. Antibody molecule has how many peptides? A typical antibody molecule has how many peptides? Four. Two are heavy chains and two are light chains. Why light chains are called light chain? Because the molecular weight is less. Usually light chains molecular weight is about twenty five thousand and molecular weight of the heavy chain is 50,000 to 70,000 depending upon there are three constant or four constant region, right? So there are four peptide held together by the disulfide bond, two light chains, two heavy chains in a typical antibody molecule. Is that right? Now, on the amino ends of the heavy chain and amino end of the light chain, there are which areas? Variable areas. There's variable area of the light chain, there's variable area of the heavy chains. In between these two variable area, what is fitting there? Antigen fats. Is that right? So antibody uh, binds with the antigen through the heavy chain as well as through the light chains through its variable domains. And then there are, there's only one constant domain of the light chains, but heavy chains have how many? Three or four constant domains. Any question after this? There is no question, no problem up to this. Now, another thing that some doctors they were doing ex some experiment with the antibody molecules and what did they do? Let me tell you, suppose I draw here a typical antibody molecule. I hope you understand it, isn't it? And what did they do? That put these molecules in a flask, right? Put the antibody molecules in flask. But in the flask, in this container, after putting the antibody molecules, I think I will make the light change color different so that you can appreciate the diagram better. 
these are the antibody molecules which we have put into this container and of course they are held together by yes please disulfide bonds now what the researchers did they added a very naughty type of enzyme what is this enzyme this is called papain they added a papain to this and they were surprised that papain could break down this molecule at a special points okay i'll keep my color scheme same right uh they found that papain could cut this molecule at this point it digested the molecule of antibody antibody is a protein that were digested by this papain and papain uh, is a enzyme which attack the this region this is called hinge region what is this h i n g hinge region attack the hinge region and digest it from this point and this point now antibody break down into how many components how many fragments yes question goes to mr yes how many antibody broken into how many components the three components look at it one component is this another component is this and another fragment is this so antibody break down into three fragments so what did they do they put antibody molecules into container and add the papain to that and papain digested every antibody molecule into how many fragments three fragments and these fragments which were made out of them this fragment has right amino end of the heavy chain and and complete light chain right held together another amino end of the heavy chain with complete light chain and this portion has remaining heavy chains held together by disulfide bond is that right now then after that they added the antigen to this what did they added let's suppose this is the antigen for that particular antibody they added the antigen to the solution and they came to know that these fragments antigen bind with these fragments right but do you think antigen will bind at this point or will the antigen bind here no will antigen bind here will antigen yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah will antigen bind here will antigen bind here will it bind here but it will bind here so in this way uh the researcher found that when antibodies are put into a container and treated by the papain antibodies will break down into fragments some of the fragments will be binding with the antigen and other fragments will not bind with the antigen these fragments which do not bind with the antigen they found they will go to the bottom i mean bottom of the flask these molecules will these fragments will go to the bottom of the flask and there they will crystallize they will change into crystals due to that reason doctor said when an antibody is treated by the papain when a antibody molecule is again let's draw it here and here this is disulfide disulfide bond here is your light chains isn't it so they found when they treat with the papain antibody will break down at this point is that right it divide into three fragments out of these three fragments two fragments were able to bind with the antigens and other fragment was unable to bind with the antigen and this fragment went down and it crystallized so they called this fragment of the antibody fragment which crystallizes fc portion of the antibody in the books you very frequently read fc portion of the antibody or fc fragment of the antibody c c originally was put for the crystallization that this component of the uh, antibody will crystallize once antibodies are treated with the papain 
and this fragment this will binding with the the fragment which was antigen binding we call it fragment antigen binding so we call it fab so basically a classical molecule of antibody consists of four peptide having two heavy chains two light chains held together by disulfide bonds and having two fab fragment and one fc fragment right or portion am i clear now actually this fc stand for crystallization but it also should remind you that with this end there is what carboxyl end of the heavy chains because amino end was here for the heavy chain so c for crystalline c for carboxyl end c for complement activation some of the antibodies activate the complement this is the portion of the antibody which activate the complement this is the portion of the antibody which activate the complement it means in this domain more specifically if you remember there was for heavy chain how many domains were there heavy chain variable constant heavy chain 1 constant heavy chain constant heavy chain 2 and constant heavy chain 3 or some cases 4 uh actually this is the constant heavy chain 2 which has the capability to activate the complements so complement activating part of the antibody is part of the fc fragment so fc fragment should remind you that some of the, that this portion crystallizes this portion is having carboxyl end of the heavy chain and if if this antibody is going to activate the complement then fc portion will activate the complement and you will know later that igg class of the antibody crosses placenta igg class of the antibody from the mother through the placenta goes to the fetus so actually with the placental cell this portion of the antibody bind and help the antibody to cross through the placenta so it should remember remind you also about crossing cross through yes play center and you know antibodies bind with specific type of cells for example later on later on you will learn ige specially bind with the catches the mast cell this is the right so again igg will igg class of antibodies will catch the mast cell or bind the mast cell with this portion so catching cells am i clear no problem so fc portion stand for what originally is standard for this fragment could crystallize but this should also remind fc stand for carboxyl end fc stand for fragment which activate complements fragment which help the antibody to cross the placenta and fragment of the antibody which help it to bind with the cells any question up to this and fab portion it's enough to say that this is a fragment which is antigen binding fragment am i clear no problem up to this okay then so we can say that antibody one antibody has what thing antibody plus papain yes goes to what thing antibody will go into what antibody treated by papain will go into two fab fragment plus one fc fragment is that right now we do another treatment take an antibody molecule okay let's make some seductive color scheme this is right this is a typical antibody molecule of course consisting of two heavy chains and two light chains is that right now rather than papain this time we treat it by pepsin you have heard of pepsin what is pepsin it is also proteolytic enzyme not a name of a girl 
pepsin, right? Uh, when antibody is treated by the pepsin, uh, what uh, at which point pepsin will digest the antibody? It produces multiple digestions at this point. So actually now, when antibody is treated by the pepsin, then FC portion is digested at multiple fragments, but both FAB portion are still kept together. The important point is that pepsin attack the antibody molecule uh, not at the hinge region, rather distal to away from the hinge region towards the carboxyl end of the IV chains. Is that right? Due to this reason, uh, both FAB portion are kept, kept together. Am I right? Now you will help me rapidly. If I say this is one antibody molecule and this is another antibody molecule. Let me take your test. Enzyme attack here and divide the antibody molecule into how many fragments? Three. Which enzyme is this? Yes? Papain. And if I say that enzyme attack here and both FAB portion are still held together. What is this? Pepsin. Am I clear? No problem up to this? For sure? Okay. So now we have learned something about the basic structure of the antibody. Another thing, then when antibody is reacting with the antigen, when antigen and antibody bind together, they are held together by what type of forces and what type of bond? You know when they come together they make a bond, isn't it? So what type of bond is present between the antibody and antigen? Yeah, I'm, I'm about to be impressed by you. Okay, let me make our original molecule again. I hope you remember, what are these chains I'm drawing? Heavy chains. And what are these chains? Yes, light chains. And rapidly tell me, what are these bonds I'm making? Disulfide bonds, that's good. And what is this fragment? Variable of the heavy chain. And this is also variable of the heavy chain. And what should be here? This area? Variable of the light chain. And what should be here? Variable of the light chains. Then let's suppose I'm going to make the antigen. If antigen is like this, Right? Now this antigen is if going to fit here, then what will happen? What was this area? Constant or variable? Yes? Variable. Now when this will fit into this, I think I have to make this a little lengthy so that it should look more proportionate with the yes now this is caught over here and right so we say antigen is caught, it's caught in between the variable region of heavy chain and variable region of the light chain. This is what you already know. Now I know a little more. Actually within the variable region, there are very special areas which make the fitting of, which make the fitting of variable region more better with the antigen and these areas are given an additional name you know this it is making a better fit isn't it these areas are called hyper variable regions what are these called 
these three are called hyper variable regions. So we say within the variable region of the light chain and within the variable region of the heavy chain there are small amino acid groups right which are called hyper variable regions which make the binding between the uh, you can say antibody and antigen as precise as possible very very precise is that right now I will draw the same thing here and you will tell me what's going on here yes now you will tell me that this is variable of the heavy chain and this is variable of the light chain and antigen is caught over right but within the variable of the light chain what is this region hyper variable regions Is that clear? One thing which is very important to know that in a given antibody molecule, the antigen will bind on the same side, one side that is the same antigen is going to bind on the other side as well, right? So both sides have the same antigen specificity. Am I clear? No problem up to this, right? Then I was talking about with which forces they are held together or which type of bonds are in between them? What type of bonds are in between them? The forces are, the forces with which antibody and antigen are interacting. Those forces are very simple forces. These forces are, yes, have you heard of electrostatic forces? Electrostatic forces, let me tell you how they are coming. For example, a minor acid which is present over here is positively charged and a minor acid here is negatively charged. And they are attracted to, each, attracted to each other. We say they are held together by electrostatic forces or by the van der Waal forces. You know van der Waal forces? Van der Waal forces. So there are electrostatic forces or there are van der Waal forces. This wall is not that wall on which you sit and fall down, right? This is V. So electrostatic forces and van der Waal forces keep the antigen and antibodies together when they are specific for each other. And what type of bonds are formed in between? Is this ionic bonds or are they covalent bonds, right? Or they are like... Uh, simple hydrogen bonds and hydrophobic bonds yes yeah dr safa is trying to tell you know the bonding between the antibody and antigen is one way to tell is that is it strong bonds or weak bonds okay only tell me this thing the weak bonds right if you bring you know let's suppose if there are you bring lot of antibodies Right? Antigen, some of the antigens may dissociate and go to the other antibody. If all the antibodies have same antigen specificity. So these are these bonds are not permanent bonds. They are somewhat reversible bonds or they are weak bonds. So we can say that these bonds are not ionic bonds. These are not covalent bonds. These are simply, yes, hydrogen bonds and hydrophobic bonds. So the forces which are keeping the ant specific antigen antibody molecule together are van der Waal forces and electrostatic forces and making very weak bonds like hydrogen bonds and hydrophobic bonds. Am I clear to all of you? Is there any special question here? There is no. Okay, let's have a break. <laughs>